So let's talk about rolling bodies. What do you mean by rolling bodies? Motion that you've studied so far has been what we refer to as straight line motion. We just call this kinematics, um, motion without considering the force and so forth. We introduced motion in a straight line, this time looking at a force. So the minute you talk about the force, then we call it dynamics. We then also spoke about angular motion. And with angular motion, S, which is the displacement in linear space, tends to theta, V tends to omega, acceleration tends to alpha, and so forth. And then we said that there's a relationship between this side and that side. And the relationship will be the radius. You can relate v with omega by just multiplying it with r. We can relate acceleration with alpha by just multiplying it with r. A circular body that says a wheel and it has the radius r. Now this wheel is rotating that way. We said that the speed, there's a difference between angular speed and angular velocity. The speed is basically just the rate at which it is covering the arc length, whereas the angular velocity will be the rate at which it's covering the, the angle, theta in radians. So this is the speed at which this object is basically rotating. So far, what we have done is that we've considered object as point masses. Although the object might have any shape, we are considering the mass to be acting at the center of mass. Meaning, when I say to you, calculate the acceleration of the car, you don't ask me what shape of car is that. You basically just take it as just the point, what is its mass, hence center of mass, and then we are able to divide the force with the mass, and then we are able to get the acceleration from Newton second law of motion. For a circle like this, we know that the center of mass will be at the center. So when I'm asking you, what is the acceleration of this wheel? I need to qualify my question by telling you, do I mean the velocity in terms of rotational velocity or angular velocity, or do I mean just the tangential velocity, which is just the rotational speed? If we imagine that the tractor has covered a distance s, the wheel will basically be rolling such that the center of mass is parallel to the direction of motion. What will be the relationship between the velocity here and the velocity there? This depends on whether the wheel is turning or if it is skidding. This is what I mean. If you apply brakes, and after applying brakes, you skid forward, just like that. If this is V1, V2, V3, we can say that at a point in time, their velocities will be the same. What if we have the same wheel at the middle part, which is the same as the velocity at the center of mass, but this one over here, when the wheel is rotating, how do you relate V1 with V comp? I think if it's moving in a constant velocity, uh, the, the, um, the center of mass and the, velo the first velocity, it's going to be the same if it's moving at the constant velocity. No, sir, I think V1 will be greater than V, v comp. Because, like, uh -huh. it, will, it will spin a lot before it can travel. In answering this question, Think of these three scenarios. Here, we're going to assume just pure rotation. No translational motion. It's not rolling. It is spinning about a fixed point. Now, in this particular case, V common, the central part of the wheel will basically be 
stationary. Pure translational simply means there's no rotation. Translation means straight line. So in this particular case, you can say V1, V2, and V3 will be the same. Now, in this case, we consider it to be rolling. So as it rotates, it covers a horizontal distance. But then, if you think about it, if V1 and V comb were to be equal, that means the top part of the wheel will not roll to move forward, just like the answer that I got from the gentleman about earlier on. So it means V1 or the position on top there has to move faster. So that's why rolling, which is the topic of today, rolling bodies is considered different from just mere rotation and translation because it combines the translational motion with the rotational motion. I hope you understand me on that part. Anyone with questions there before I move to other things? Are you convinced? Yes. Perfect. Now we only consider an object that is rolling. Consider an object that is um, on a flat surface like that. It's rolling without slipping. Something interesting is happening at point C, a contact point between the disc and the surface will momentarily be stationary. So this velocity here, R omega, which is in that direction, we will also have a translational velocity, V. So these two will basically cancel out and you'll find that the translational velocity at C will be zero. And then we see the tangential velocity at A will be R omega plus the translational velocity of the center of mass, V, twice the speed of the center of mass. The contact point would not move relative to the ground. The top part is moving forward with twice the velocity of the center of mass. Distance will be given by the 2 pi r. The velocity will be given by 2 pi r over t. Or 2 pi over t is the same as omega. So this is the same as r omega. The object will actually move in translation at the same rate as it's rotating. The frictional force that we've studied so far has been in twofold. We had static, which is between two surfaces that are not yet moving relative to one another, and we also have kinetic friction. There's another type of friction, which is called rolling friction, but this time, just confiding ourselves to these two types, the frictional force that's possible to happen here is only the static friction. If the object is attempting to skid, right, meaning if there's an external force that's applied on this rolling object, then you will have the static friction. So in which direction will the frictional force be? The static friction will only happen if, like in case this wheel is attached to a car that's having a momentum that's pulling it forward, then the static friction will be in the opposite direction. Let's consider a spheric object that is placed on an inclined plane of um, angle theta. We know that the weight mg will act down this way. We will also have the frictional force that's going to act backwards. It will be the normal force acting upwards. We consider it to be rolling without slipping. Rolling without slipping simply means the distance traveled by the spherical object after it has turned 360 degrees, 2 pi, the distance will be equal to the circumference, which is just 2 pi r. The velocity will be s over t, which is equal to 2 pi r over t, and this is nothing but omega r, an expression that can give us the acceleration as it goes down the incline. Uh, the frictional force is acting backwards. The x component of the weight, which is mg sine theta, gives us ma. So then we can find the frictional force by using Newton's second law of motion. We know that f is equal to ma will turn 
into torque equal to rotational inertia multiplied by alpha, which is rotational acceleration. Also, we know that the frictional force will exert a force perpendicular to the radius at the contact point. Hence, the sphere will rotate. All right. So there will be a torque that's going to be given by the frictional force multiplied by the radius. We can equate them and find FF multiplied by R will be equal to I alpha. So from here we can find the frictional force in terms of I alpha over the radius. So let's just make this equation number two, where alpha is given by A over R. And therefore the frictional force will be given by I A over R squared. So we can substitute equation three in one, that's going to be minus FF plus mg sin theta equal to ma. So we can actually just say this will be minus IA over R squared plus mg sin theta equal to ma. Let's divide throughout with m. Then we'll get IA over MR squared plus g sin theta equal to a. Then we can take a's to one side. g sin theta equal to a plus IA over MR squared. This is the same as G sine theta. So therefore, A will be given by G sine theta divided by 1 plus I divided by MR squared. So this is a useful equation for obtaining the acceleration. An object that's rolling without skidding will have two types of um, kinetic energy. First, kinetic energy will be from the uh, translational motion and the second one will be from the rotational motion. Now let's look at angular momentum P as mass times velocity. Similarly, we know that we can turn linear motion variables to angular motion variables by just multiplying them with R. We use L for angular momentum because we are using the cross product this equation can be expanded as m r v sine the angle between r and v and the units are kilograms square meters per second l can be written as m r v sine theta this angular momentum has meaning only with respect to the specified origin so you must specify uh, the origin at which the particle is supposed to be rotating if you have an object, it can be any shape with particles inside. And let's say we are rotating this object about this point, and we're going to call this object 1, 2, and so forth. You can sum up the angular momentum of particles that we find inside that system. Capital L, which is the total angular momentum, will be equal to the angular momentum of the individual particles. So you sum all of them up to the nth particle. And if we replace V with R omega, and we can take omega outside the summation because it's just a constant. So this will be the angular momentum of a rigid body with multiple particles. Let's talk about conservation of angular momentum. It turns out that objects that are spinning or rolling or rotating don't want to stop. And just like conservation of linear momentum, we can also say that for an isolated system, the initial angular momentum will be the same as the final angular momentum. You've got to understand that this is only possible for isolated systems where no external torques present. Now, imagine you've got a ball tied to a string to be rotating about the radius r. And I urge you to try this at home. So now the question is, what will happen to the ball's linear speed when you double the length r without further swinging the ball? The final radius will be 2 times the initial radius. So the final velocity will be a half of the initial velocity. 